Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love, and we worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. <clears throat> We worship and we praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just, who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and cry out, on Friday, the king endured pain and was crucified, and today, victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday, a lance opened his side, and today, in his compassion, the waters of baptism flow. On Friday, he was crowned with thorns, and today, he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light to see you, the true Bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Daughter of the Nations. Thank you. 
O Lamb of God, who has sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks. O incense of forgiveness, we adore you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, and purified us by your holy baptism sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us up by your ascension and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. Kaddishat aloho kaddishat Now the church is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose. Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life. Lord, God, you accepted what the just had offered you. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Barak Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you once lived following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the desires of our flesh, following the wishes of the flesh and the impulses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like all the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy 
because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. He raised us up, up, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by the grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. the praise, glory, and honor of the most holy trinity. I burn this incense. Give you this song. <clears throat> Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, the listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him in reply, Lord, you know everything, and you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wished. But when you have grown old, you shall stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and lead you where you do not wish to go. He said this signifying by what, by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. 
This is the truth, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we welcome our brothers and sisters. You are more than welcome to be among us. We do the best we can during these months. If you wish to come to communion, we will be distributing communion. It's by intinction. So the Blessed Sacrament is intincted in the precious blood. When you come forward, keep social distance as you wait in line for those who wish. And then there's a, there's a bow before you come up to receive, and then just simply open your mouth, present your tongue to receive Holy Communion. Today is also the feast of Saint Simon the Apostle. The Gospel lists him as being Simon the Zealot. And he's a good story for us. The same thing with this Gospel today, it's a nice coincidence with our Lord asking St. Peter three times, of course, to make up for the reparation of the denial and the repudiation of even knowing our Lord a month before during his passion, he allows us, our, our Lord allows him to make publicly before the other apostles that act of reparation to, by saying, I do love you. Now we've talked in years past about the distinction in the Greek for the word love. In Syriac, we don't have it the same way we don't have it in English. Love is just to love. There's not a variety of words for what we would call love. So what happens in this gospel with Saint, with Simon and the other Simon the Apostle, both Simons are commemorated on this day, one by the gospel and one by the day of his death. And Simon the Zealot was martyred about the year 60, early 60s. He evangelized primarily the Middle East and the northern part of Africa. Simon is known as the zealot. So we see in the gospel this act of reparation that Simon is allowed to make before our Lord. And Simon the zealot, the very fact that he's called the zealot, doesn't mean that he's zealous. But for many of the commentators, what it means, he belonged actually to a, what would we even say, a political movement, if not an insurrection, before he was called to be an apostle. So between these two Simons, actually, there's a great amount of hope given to us to understand these are men, and that salvation is not an event, it's not some magical moment, it's not some moment that happens just to us when we die. Salvation is about healing, being made whole. And in fact, in the Hebrew, the word essentially between what we call salvation and what we call healing are essentially the same word. So what's taking place here that Simon, both of the Simons, the apostles remind us, is that salvation is a journey, it's a pathway. It's not a moment. And regardless of where we have been up until this present moment, we can always enter into healing more profoundly. We can never say that we're perfectly healthy. Maybe we, when we were 23 and we had a perfect exercise regime and we watched our diet and we exercised, maybe for that one moment, we were what we say totally healthy. The rest of our days, uh, too many bags of chips, greasy burgers, whatever, my diet, my lack of exercise. I'm not fully as healthy as I could be. Well, if it's true for us in our bodies, in our natural life, it is absolutely true in our spiritual life. We can always be more whole. 
We can always be healed. And with that understanding, it doesn't mean, oh, I'm terrible and I'm wretched. No, it just means I'm wounded. But it also means I'm not satisfied with being wounded. We've talked about in weeks past how this virus targets especially underlying health conditions. Now, for some of us, that just happens to us. It's a family trait, it's congenital, whatever. But we do have to admit that for many of us, our underlying health issues, our diabetes, or whatever, are because of life choices that I made over these years. And so it's for us to look over our lives. It's an examination of conscience health-wise for the world to make now. But more importantly for us, that examination of conscience is not to look at me to see how bad I am. That's not the purpose. The examination of conscience is to understand what are the obstacles barricading me to proceeding on the path of the love of the sacred heart. It's a totally different vision. The examination of conscience is not navel-gazing. It's not a checklist. It's to say, where am I most wounded? And for Peter and his human respect of a month before, capitulating before, we're told, a servant girl, swearing up and down, cussing and swearing under oath that I don't know who this man is. That's a profound wound. And so with both of these, Simon the Zealot, going back to Zealot, the Zealots were a political movement at the time of the Roman Empire, starting in the beginning of the first century in our calendar, who worked to get rid of the Romans and to get rid of occupied authorities. Think of Iraq now. There's always bombs going up and there's always attacks being done to get rid of the occupying forces. The Zealots were a party, a political party doing this, and they were not beyond assassinations. So the Romans called them sicarii. A sicarius was a, da a large dagger, which apparently was their preferred instrument of assassination. Get up close and stab these people. And so the Romans referred to them as being the daggers because of their chosen weapon. Now the fact that we have in the gospel telling us that Simon is a zealot, it's like in the gospel of St. Matthew, Matthew telling us, I was a public tax collector, I was a publican. I collaborated with the occupying forces to collect taxes, which is why they were considered public sinners. And here when we're told in the gospel, we're telling the gospel not that Simon was himself personally necessarily an assassin, but he belonged to a pretty violent political movement. We have no record of when our Lord called him. We don't know how he became an apostle, but we do have that term zealot. And that he went on to become a great missionary in bringing the gospel of healing to Africa and throughout the Middle East. We know that healing is possible to each one of us. I dare say there's no one in this church who belongs to a political movement of violence waiting to assassinate the governor of Maine. Better not be. But what it means for us is to understand is that pathways can always be changing and healing can always take place. And so when we look at this gospel, it gives us a great sense of understanding that when we enter into the resurrection, it's not just a commemoration of a past event. It's an entrance into a hospital situation where we are tended to, we are bandaged, and balm is placed within us to bring us life, to heal us. Which is why in the Husoyo you notice that beautiful phrase, clothe us with the garment of light so that in this garment, in this light, we may see you, the bridegroom. It's just a very brief phrase, but it is profound in the understanding. St. Ephraim refers to this transformation of healing and light as being the luminous eye being able to come to see in the light everything that happens, the events in my family, in my workplace, viruses, political movements, to see everything in the light of the healing of the garment, 
which is placed on those who enter into the mystery of the resurrection. That's what our Lord is doing with Simon. He's not embarrassing him. He's not humiliating him. He doesn't say anything about what he had done a month before. He's just saying, now you testified once that you loved me and that you would die. Even if everyone else rejected me, you'd be there. He doesn't say that. Peter understands that. And the other apostles also understand that. But what he does say in that first question is, Simon, do you love me more than these others? Simon will remember that he professed that in the night of the Last Supper. And that Simon, the other apostle, can leave behind the fact of only being angry about political things and trying to find subversion and conspiracy everywhere. Simon came to understand in acquiring the luminous eye to let go of the sicarius, to let go of the dagger. Because while it may be important that we are occupied by Roman forces, it is not the most important thing. And most especially, getting rid of the occupying force will not heal me. So when Simon comes to understand the path of what our Lord proposes of shlomo, of healing, when he understands that, he lets it go and is not ashamed to say that I belong to that political, conspiratorial, insurrectionist group. Both of these men in this coincidence of the feast day and of today's gospel are beautiful for us because it reminds us of the journey that each one of us is on and the fact that we always move forward, hopefully, so that I am more profoundly clothed with that garment of light today than I was a year ago at Easter, so that I have the ability more profoundly to see the true bridegroom within that light. That's all our Lord asks, he does and nothing more. Which is why also I wanted to take an occasion to salute all of our people who are at home. Many of them, I've told them, you can't leave your house. The demographic of our parish is precisely the target group. And it breaks their hearts. I talk to them on the phone. They are very much bolstered by the fact that they know the doors are not locked. That helps them a lot. But at the same time, they persevere. So I send out to them best wishes that there is light and there is hope and there is healing and all of that is possible. And someday we will be again together. But over these last months, we also learn how to sit around the whole church. For those, our brothers and sisters who come from otherwhere, we had kind of a tendency to kind of clump up in the last four pews in one corner and the whole church would be empty. That's just not going to cut it these days. You'd have to wrap everybody in a sheet when they came in for social distancing because they insist upon sitting only in three pews. So when we return to this idea of healing, it is a question of perseverance and sometimes it is very, very fatiguing to desire to be healed. It's so much easier to simply just pop open the computer, spend seven hours on video games, or just simply binge whatever the stupid terminology of doing something and pour millions of dollars into Netflix. It's so much easier to do that. And just grab the whole bag of potato chips and just simply one after the other wolf them down and groan once we get up from the chair because we've been sitting there for hours. So we understand that. But on this day, may the two Simons intercede for us that they who have walked the path to know that healing is possible and that it is beautiful and luminous, that they obtain from the hidden divinity of infinite love and charity, that we ourselves also come to understanding that path of healing, that they obtain for us the desire to persevere on this path and in the end to be able to respond to our Lord positively. Because remember at the end of this gospel, after everything is said and done, and after Peter's been told, you know, things are gonna get worse, you're gonna die, you're gonna be martyred. And then when all that is done, we ask the two Simons to intercede for each of us individually so that we can respond affirmatively, 
positively, with great desire, when we hear our Lord then say to each one of us, you follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the creed, which in your red books is on page 748, 748. We believe in one God, Telot madeb he daloho, walvot aloho dam hari tayo. Reinem selot aibu tao ke ulal baitoch veskud el chayek lo hod kodesho. Sheets in your pews for the transfer hymn of the resurrection to be recited. The Lord reigns clothed in majesty.
Almighty Lord and God, you accept the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Simon. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. pleasing to God. Peace, Peace, love, love and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of peace be with us. O Lord, on all hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, 
and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are calmless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Holy, 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 mighty Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who has come, and will come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your Majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son, Kiri Eilei Son. Wabiyama harakam hashra dilema bedhaye. And sabe lachma beda koni shantu ubarahu kadesh. Waksoya bil tarmita karumara. Sabakhula mehne. Kul <laughs> So dumb, sich woman, hamro, men, my yo. Barahu Kadesh, Yabel Talmi, Dau Karomara, Sabish Tower, Mehene, Koloho, Kono, Deni Tau, Demo, Dilan, Dianti, Kihadato. Dachlo faikun, wachlo psagie, et e shedu meti hem. Hosoyon, haume wa haye nan alam alamin. Do this in memory of me. 
Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. Of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, let this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood, so make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. a pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbor and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life, with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, 
Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them, Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on the solid rock of the true faith and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life in a world of distractions which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor. May those who you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Holy Fa the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son. Glorious St. Stephen the Archdeacon and first martyr and all who pleased you and professed your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O oh Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in all this and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have
who offered yourself to your Father. You are the High Priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Thank you. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink, O lover of all people. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us. Protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the life-giving cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
So we certainly take this moment to wish God's fullest blessings upon all of the mothers among us who sacrifice much to bring life into the world. And I especially want to signal out the mother of this parish who sang so beautifully during the ablutions. Though she may not have any physical children of her own, I think the parish would testify that she has been not only a living archive, but also maternal to the entire community. So may God bring his greatest blessings upon all of you. And go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, and the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.